Welcome to Logical Reading, Reasoning, and Counterexamples. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at conditional statements, and that's if A, then B. And it's as simple as that. This we call our hypothesis. It's our if statement. Then B is called our conclusion. Let's take a look at these first two examples. If it is Friday, then Anne and Rob are going to our movies and to identify our hypothesis and conclusion. Our hypothesis is our F's if statement. F. <laughs> yes, there is an F in if. If it is Friday is our hypothesis. Then, that's an awful big one, Rob and Anne are going to the movies is our conclusion. When working with numbers, it's the exact same thing. If 4x plus 3, well, that needs to be a little bit longer, is greater than 27, which is our hypothesis, then x is going to be greater than 6, is our conclusion. And that's working with conditional statements, if and then. If is our hypothesis, then is our conclusion. I, our hypothesis Let's go over this again. Our hypothesis of the first one, it's Friday. And our conclusion, Anne and Rob are going to the movies. What did we leave out? We left out the if and then. Number two, our hypothesis, 4x plus 3 is greater than 27. If our conclusion, then x is greater than 6. Here are some more examples of conditional statements. The difference between these and the other ones is these do not have the if and then in them. So you need to uh, take a look at what the hypothesis is and what the conclusion is. As almost putting the if and then in them. And this can get a little tricky. Take a look at the first one. Brianna wears goggles when she is swimming. I'm going to go ahead and insert. If Brianna wears goggles, then she is swimming. Does that make sense? Sure does. So the hypothesis is Brianna wears goggles. And the conclusion, well, she is swimming. Let's take a look at the next one. I will go to the ball game with you on Saturday. Let's, if usually comes first, so let's put if in and see if we can fit in then. If I will go to the ball game with you, then on Saturday 
wait a second. Scratching my head here. That's not right. That if I will if I will go to the ball game then on Saturday. No. Let's try that again. And this time let's switch it. If it is Saturday, then I will go to the ball game. That makes a lot more sense. So in this case, our hypothesis is Saturday, if it is Saturday. I just spelled that wrong. Our hypothesis is if it is Saturday and our conclusion, I will go to the ball game. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. For a number x such that 6x minus 8 equals 16, x equals 4. If a number x such that 6x minus 8 equals 16, then x equals 4. And that makes sense. So our hypothesis is a number x such that 6x equals minus 8 equals 16, and our conclusion, well, is x equals 4. So in this case, the hypothesis comes first, and the conclusion comes second. Let's look at the next one. A rhombus with side units of x minus y I'm sorry, I read that wrong. A rhombus with side lengths of x minus y units has a perimeter of 4x minus 4y units. You may not know what a rhombus is. I don't know. The x minus y, 4x minus y. That sounds all confusion. It's like Greek. Well, let's think of it. Has. Has is a key word, meaning has an answer. So here I would say if goes first, then has a perimeter or the answer. So if is our hypothesis. And if a rhombus with size of lengths has x minus y units, then the perimeter is 4x minus y. So this is our conclusion. Let's go ahead and take a look at deductive reasoning. A deductive reasoning is the process of using facts, rules, definitions, or properties to reach a valid conclusion. Suppose you have a true conditional statement, and you know that the hypothesis is true when you give an example. Well, the deductive reasoning allows you to say that the conclusion is true for that case. In other words, it's your job to prove if that conditional statement is true or not. And you have to use something, facts, would be nice to explain to someone or to prove to someone that it is true. Let's go ahead and take this conditional statement as an example. First, we have to identify the hypothesis. Remember, it's next to the if. Our hypothesis is two numbers are odd. This is our hypothesis, okay? 
our conclusion is their sum is even. That's our conclusion. Through deductive reasoning, we need to prove that statement. That's either going to come out true or false. Either way, we will have facts to prove whether it's true or not. So let's take two numbers that are odd. Um, two is even. Three is odd. Plus five. And the answer to three plus five is eight. Is that true? Yes. This conditional statement is true. Does it always work? I don't know. Let's try some more. Nine's an odd number. Now there's some, so I know I'm adding them. Plus eleven. Nine plus eleven is is twenty. Is twenty even? Yes. So in this case, it is true. Or the conclusion is true. Okay, all I have to do is give one fact. In this case, I gave two, but I gave one fact that makes it true. Let's check out another one. The sum the sum <laughs> that's a funny looking at of two numbers is fourteen. This is my conditional statement. The sum of two numbers is 14. I can use an example of any two numbers I want. Can I make this conditional statement true? Well, yeah, sure. If I have the sum of two numbers, 10 and 4, guess what? I get 14. This conclusion is true. If the numbers are 10 and 4, 11 and 3, the hypothesis is true. However, if the numbers are, for example, 8 and 6, the hypothesis is false. There's no way to determine. No, because 8 and 6 is also 14. But I have to say this hypothesis or conditional statement is false because there's no way of saying, even though I proved it, I don't necessarily know what the two numbers are. Okay, they can be any two numbers. See here, I can use any two numbers that are odd, and I will always get an even number. In this case, it's too general. I don't know what the two numbers are. I can take any two numbers, but I'm not always going to get the conclusion of 14. Okay, so this is what we call um, invalid. Okay, uh, let's see if you can determine a valid conclusion that will follow the next statement. Let's try one without numbers. It is Wednesday. A valid conclusion would be
There's a quiz. And that's if you have a quiz every Wednesday. Another one um, in my class, I give a quiz every Friday. It is Friday. The conclusion is a year having a quiz. Okay, those are some examples. Let's talk about counterexamples. A counterexample is proving that the conclusion to the hypothesis is wrong. And it's just given an example that proves it wrong. Let's take a look at the first one. If Anna is in school, then she is in science class. If Anna's in school, is she always in science class? Not necessarily. She could be a counterexample to prove this wrong would be if Anna is in school, Anna could be in math class. Or she could have a schedule with no science in it. Just because she's in school doesn't mean she's in science class. Let's take a look at another example. We have to give a counterexample. Something that will prove the statement or the conditional statement false. If a number x is squared, then x squared is going to be greater than x. Okay. If x equals Two, well, two squared is greater than x. Four, well, that's supposed to be two, is greater than two. Yeah, sure, that works. x is three. Is three squared greater than three? Well, three squared is nine. Okay, nine is greater than three. I need to come up with a counterexample, something that will make this statement false. Not necessarily always true. Rather than going higher, what if I go lower? Ooh, I like that idea. What if x is 1? Is 1 squared greater than 1? What's 1 squared? 1 squared means 1 times 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. 1 is not greater than 1. So here is my counter example. Counter example is a statement that proves your conditional statement wrong. 